Welcome back to Retro Depot. My name is Doug. Today we're going to be talking more about um, digital logic design, but we're going to be taking a little bit different of approach. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a PCB that I've been working with. Uh, this is a single board computer, and I'll let you take a little bit closer look at it. This computer is actually a evolution of my previous uh, single board computers. For a while now I've been working on designing a computer that can be more standalone and more portable, uh, something that I don't have to have a actual computer to be able to connect to. Now I've had a couple little prototypes that I've worked on. One of them was a version of the uh, computer that I stuffed inside of a uh, TI-99 and it used uh, this particular board right here but realistically I wanted to have a computer that was all in one I could 3D print a small case for take it with me uh, potentially even have a small TFT composite screen like a, 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 a backup screen like you can buy on eBay maybe like a three and a half or seven inch maybe and I wanted to uh, be able to take this with me wherever I went. That way I could play around with it and program on it. But it needed to have some features. So I came up with this design here. And we're going to take a little bit closer look at it here in a moment. And I'm going to go over the schematic with you and show you some of the things that I've been doing with it. But the point that I'm trying to stress is the heart of this computer, um, while it does have a Z80 on it and it's got several other peripherals on it, uh, one of the major things that it has is the Max, uh, sev the EPM 7128, and this uh, particular variant is a 84 um, uh, pin uh, PLCC um, or PLLC, whatever the terminology is. Um, that's kind of the heart of it. And the reason why I wanted to share this project with you is I mentioned that I was working on another board in the previous videos. And this particular board that I'm working on, the idea is, is that once it's done, we will be able to take this board and go on a road trip. We don't need a laptop to, you know, retro compute, you know, with a small Z80 uh, serial based computer. Similar to this here, um, most of you have seen my uh, little small uh, Z80 computer that I made. And while this is great because it hooks up through USB to a serial port, um, you can hook it up to a laptop if you will. And it's got some I.O. on it. The idea behind this is very similar. I wanted something that I can just take with me. I don't have to have another computer. I just grab this and go. And if I want to even go to a bar and drink a few beers and play around with basic, <laughs> you know what? The idea is, is that I'll have a way to do that. So we're going to take just a moment, we're going to take a look at the board, and then afterwards we'll take a look at the schematic, and we will also look at some of the features that we're planning on using for the CPLD once this board is finished. Okay, so this is the PCB, a uh, little bit up close. And I want to walk you through some of the things that we have. It's not too different from my previous PCB, which I have right here. Um, it's got a lot of the same components on it, but uh, we're going to walk through it. So, first off, on the far left, we have the expansion header. It has the complete Z80 bus as well as the expanded um, uh, memory um, and uh, ROM and RAM select uh, signals. We have the Z80. We have a third, or I'm sorry, a 32-pin. 512k ROM, a 32-pin 512k um, SRAM, we have the Z80 Dart, we have um, a 7432 uh, uh, quad OR gate, we have a uh, place for a um, 24 megahertz uh, uh, clock oscillator, we have uh, a couple diodes, um, some uh, resistor arrays, the EPM uh, 7128 in a 84-pin uh, package. We have a 74HC245 uh, uh, bus transceiver. 
we have the 9118 um, VDP along with both the 4-bit uh, DRAMs. We have a uh, let me see here. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, we have a uh, AVR here, uh, which is running the 80 by 25 uh, column display, along with its shift register and uh, crystal. We have a video switch. It's a 4051 CD 4051, along with a Class A amplifier for the output. We have the SAA1099 along with the needed resistors and capacitors for both left and right channel audio. And we have uh, two uh, connectors here. One is a DIN5, which is video and audio out, as well as a JST connector, which is also for uh, video and audio, but in case you wanted to add a breakout board and make this uh, portable. A DB9, which is for the Sega Genesis controller. We have the CH376S along with a micro SD connector. We have a DB9 male which is for the uh, 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 serial port, the B port of the Dart, along with a MAX uh, 3232 CPE for the uh, RS232 conversion. Mm -hmm. We have the CH340G along with the USB um, type B for the uh, USB serial we have a MAX 701 which is a um, uh, power supervisor IC and we have a LM2596 and the associated circuit for that which is a um, it's a switching um, uh, DC converter and of course we've got our keyboard matrix here. Now there were a couple of uh, mistakes on this particular version of the board. Um, A19 was left unconnected between the um, uh, between the uh, expansion header, the IO um, OR gate, and the, uh, the CPLD. Uh, it's connected between these two but it was not connected from the CPLD to those. So that's going to require um, a new version. Also the uh, BOD clock was not connected from the CPLD to the uh, DART so we'll have to connect that as well. The micro SD package, um, let me get you one of those. I ordered these things in bulk so there are these cheap little eBay versions that you can get from China. Um, not really a lot to them. Let me get you a little bit closer there. Um, it fits the board perfectly, but the um, surface mount pins don't quite reach the um, don't quite reach these pads. So I'm going to have to modify that footprint some. Um, that's about the only thing that really needed changed on this board so far. Now, I haven't worked it up completely yet. I do have a board that's for the most part built, but for the keyboard. Um, it's not populated with a lot of the ICs. Because what I'm doing is I'm building it up a small piece at a time. Um, I'm going to have to connect that A19 uh, wire because I just found it earlier. I've already connected up the baud rate clock with a baud wire on the SD card. Um, I was able to make them uh, uh, solder, but I actually had to cut the little feet off of the connector and scoot it back just a little bit and just kind of tack it on. Um, it's not the best way of going about it, but you know it works. Um, yeah, so. I'm working on the board itself. Um, I've already uh, verified clock signals and things like that, but um, right now the CPU is being halted because of the weight state generator that's um, uh, provided by the CPLD. 
Um, other than that though, the first uh, version of this is in black. I don't know. I think I like the black on this board. It, um, especially if you put it in a, into a case, it's going to help kind of uh, darken it up a little bit through the little cracks between the keys. So I think I may end up keeping it like this. I'm not entirely certain just yet. But, um, yeah, that's a basic of the uh, board. Now the keyboard is actually designed around a TI-99. Um, and I mentioned that I'd stuck that other board into the TI-99 and I basically just ripped off the keyboard uh, for this particular build because I've already gotten that working. Now, that said, the keyboard and the other computer, um, it's accessed differently than this one will be. We are using a 8-bit latch to provide outputs which are then read by a row um, inputs and that same 8-bit latch is also helping to drive the AVR 80 by 25 column display. So that said, um, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a little bit more stable. One thing I noticed whenever I was working with that TI is that um, sometimes you press a key and it would read the wrong key. And the best way that I can explain that is the line um, for one column goes high it goes low and as you're pressing the key or I'm sorry it goes high sends a signal down uh, the key press is red but before it actually got a chance to uh, propagate onto the bus it had already switched to a different line and um, it was reading it as a different key press so with this we can slow it down so there's not the access time issues and it should uh, uh, solve that problem with the um, key um, as a matter of fact, we could, you know, even throw a couple no-ops in there to slow it down even more if we needed to this way. But the previous version where it was essentially an address decoder that was driving the um, columns for something as fast as this computer, even at 6 megahertz, um, it's a little bit how you doing. So, but that's the basis of the board. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to have to uh, do a reversion of this, and I've already begun working on that. I've already got those things uh, fixed, and I think that as of now, uh, this board should be, uh, you know, working for the most part, especially since I've already identified a couple bodges that I need to make. The only thing that I need to do at this point is obviously write the software for it, and then I also need to finish um, uh, designing my CPLD which we talked about some of that in the previous video and I'm not entirely set in stone on a particular design but I'm to the point now to where I can begin testing. So we're going to jump over to the computer now and we are going to take a look at the schematic for this particular board. Okay and we have the schematic pulled up here and as I mentioned before this is not too indifferent uh, compared to my previous computers. We have the um, same uh, Z80 here. Uh, basically the I.O. connector is not much different but for it has these expanded um, address uh, lines and the uh, ROM and uh, RAM chip select. We have the Dart which again isn't any different. We are using the um, uh, 32 pin uh, memory chips this time, uh, 512 for ROM and 512 for RAM. We have our um, memory decoding circuit here. Again, uh, highest uh, address on these is A18, so we need to gate A19, A20, and A21 along with RAM and ROM um, chip selects so that we can generate an onboard RAM and ROM select we have our um, pull-up resistors here for um, interrupt, non-maskable interrupt, reset, bus request, waiting. Um, also the IEI from the DART. We have our uh, CPLD, which I'll touch base on that here in a few minutes. Our serial ports, um, again the CH340G for the USB, the MAX3232 uh, um, for the uh, RS-232 on port B. We have our gamepad, um, which again, the uh, uh, it 
CPLD is uh, giving us a select signal for either you know the A or B uh, uh, buttons on the on the uh, uh, Sega Genesis gamepad, as well as the chip select, which is driving the 74. Um, it's probably going to be HCT 245. Down here we have our power circuit. Now, um, as you can tell, we've got that uh, 2W10 um, bridge rectifier, the LM2596, along with its uh, you know circuit to drive 5 volt power. We have a 78L33 uh, to provide 3.3 um, uh, volt power for the uh, SD card. Uh, we have our 24 megahertz signal here, which I just needed a place to drop it, so I dropped it down here with the power circuit, as well as our Max 701. Uh, one thing that I did add was a, a JST XH um, connector here, so that we can connect up 5 volts directly. Um, the reason for that is so that if we wanted to run this off a battery or something along those lines, we would have a connector to do that. Although we also have a jumper here so that we can power this from USB if desired, uh, along with a fuse. Now, I'm using a 500 milliamp fuse, and the purpose for that being is because USB 2.0 can supply up to 500 milliamps of power. And anything over that, you're probably going to blow your... USB port, so I just put a 500 milliamp fuse on there. Um, let's go down, take a look at the second page. So, oh, there we go. So, um, in the video generation uh, area of the schematic, we have our um, TMS 9118, along with two 16K by 4 bit DRAMs our crystal and our uh, capacitors there. Uh, these probably should be closer to 33 PF uh, picofarad, but 27 probably will work. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you might need to play with it and add a little bit more capacitance uh, for a given chip. It just really depends on the um, uh, clock generator on the inside. Uh, we also, and of course this is for the video uh, 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 color display as well as graphics and sprites. The uh, AVR, now again this is Grant Searle's design. Um, I have hacked this, uh, uh, the input portion of this off so that we can just drive the uh, video processor with a couple uh, pins. As I mentioned whenever I was uh, showing you the PCB, we're actually using the same eight lines for the um, uh, keyboard column in order to do this. So that's going to uh, help to simplify things a little bit. And then we're switching this with the CD4051. And of course it has a... Um, a, a class A amplifier here. I use this exact same amplifier on a uh, small little piece of perf board to test this circuit and I um, only used two inputs on that particular one but both inputs it drove very well. I saw no real difference between um, plugging them directly into the TV versus putting them through the CD4051, which from what I understand from some um, other videos and uh, articles I've read is that some people notice that the um, color shifts a little bit when they put it through this because it is clipping some of those signals just a little bit. But with this amplifier circuit, it actually kind of trues it back up and it works out very well. And um, it's pretty simple to construct. All you really need is a 5K um, pot. Uh, 47k, uh, or I'm sorry, a 47 uh, UF uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor, a small uh, switching diode, a 1k resistor, a 560k uh, resistor, and a 470 resistor, and then a uh, 2n4401 um, transistor. So really simple circuit, and um, it's actually provided uh, pretty decent video quality. I've been happy with it so far, but we'll see how it works once it's on a uh, printed circuit board. Now, down to the FAT controller. Um, again, the CH376S, a very simple circuit to build up. Um, it can do, uh, as you can see here, it's got the pins for USB. Uh, the USB will work in both um, 
uh, 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 USB drives, like thumb drives, as well as a host mode, which I haven't played with it, but apparently it does have the needed stuff in there to be able to um, run a USB keyboard or USB mouse. However, it's only one port, so if you wanted to have a USB keyboard and a mouse and you wanted to incorporate this, um, you'd probably have to have two of these. But that would also uh, give you two, US, or, uh, two SD cards, because I think you can use uh, the SD card and the USB host at the same time, but you cannot use a USB thumb drive and the SD card at the same time. I think you have to pick either or. I'm not entirely certain about that, but per my understanding of the Chinglish data sheet, that is what you're looking at. Now, sound generation is performed by the um, SAA uh, 1099, which is the same sound generator that was used in the CMS Game Blaster, as well as the uh, Sound Blaster uh, cards. Uh, they used two of these, but we're only using one. Now, this has both uh, left and right channels, and it has, I believe, six voices. So it's got a few voices on there, and um, it's actually a really nice uh, sounding chip. If you haven't ever heard it, you might go on there and check it out. There's actually some guys that have used it to do some MIDI uh, synths, and uh, that's always really cool. I like guys that do that. I wish I had more musical talent than what I can actually do. I played the trombone back in high school, but I never got into keyboards, and I wished I would have. Um, I've got our video connections here, as mentioned, of the DIN 5 as well as the JST connector. Um, the last page here is the keyboard, and the keyboard, again, it's the TI-99 uh, 4A matrix with some added diodes and some uh, pull-down resistors for being able to drive these. Now, one thing that I mentioned earlier was that there was a couple bodges, um, the first being that uh, the BOD clock wasn't hooked up. I've since fixed that in this schematic. I have not fixed the A19 pin. As you can see here, it was labeled A19CS. And up here, it was labeled A19EXP. So whenever I got to the routing software, it didn't think that these two were supposed to be connected, so it didn't connect them. However, the um, on the memory decoder it is connected up here to the expansion header so I've already fixed it in the schematic on the actual board itself it just took a really quick fix so but that's the organization of the board so um, if you have any questions about that you're more than welcome to uh, you know shoot me a message you can either do it here or at my website and I'd be happy to answer any questions about how this is organized. Again, I haven't finished writing the logic for the CPLD, but um, you know, once I do, that information is going to be made available. And I'll even um, post the uh, POF file. That way, if you want, you can download this thing and just use it with your own. Think of it as a, um, a G8099 engine, if you will, similar to an MSX engine. So, but. Yeah, once I get this thing built up, I'm going to be doing some more videos on it. It's been a fun project so far. It's been a big project because it's a big board and lots of routing, but it's been fun. So we're going to uh, call that it for the schematic. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you was the, um, the TI-99 that I stuffed the old one into. So, uh, this TI-99 came to me by way of a acquaintance of mine, a guy that runs a vintage gaming shop here in town, um, in Tulsa. He's in a small shopping center behind um, the, uh, well, it's next to Burlington Co. Factory at 71st Memorial, um, but it's a small shopping center. You'd miss it if you didn't know where this guy's at. I haven't been over there in a while, but um, pretty nice little shop that he's got. It's called Thrill House Games. But he gave me this TI-99 um, about three years ago, uh, maybe four years ago. And it had a d completely dead motherboard in it. The, mo or the DRAM was shot for the 9918. The uh, VDP was completely shot. The processor was shot. Um, the timer chip was shot. Um, I couldn't get any of the GROMs working. 
I've actually got some of the uh, parts that seemed like they were okay in a small bin somewhere in my parts shelf, but it was completely dead board. So I gutted it and I kept the uh, keyboard and the shell in hopes of one day finding a motherboard to put in it. But TIs are cheap, so um, there's not really a whole lot of the bare motherboards running around. So after about four years of just sitting there and holding on to the keyboard enclosure, I decided, you know what, I'm going to see if I can stuff a computer into this. And I played with a couple of little ideas here and there, but it wasn't until I decided to do this project that I did it. And again, this is the motherboard that I used for that. And essentially, to give you an idea as far as how this is comprised, it was the G80 with a small daughter board attached to either side and then just connect it up. So it, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, a couple things were changed and of course, you know, the IO for the PIO was taken out and a um, uh, fat controller card put in there and then the PIO was used to drive some of this other stuff. But the concept was the same. And what I ended up doing, I'll disconnect this so that you can see it, is I stuffed it in here like such. And um, if you look at the back, I had to do some ABS work on this, but it's got a reset pin. It's got the video and audio uh, output here. USB uh, RS-232 serial. It's got a USB port here, as well as a game controller port. Now, I bodged in a couple little things, so like I've got a uh, dead bug oscillator right there, and a couple little bodge wires here and there, and. I made some jumpers with the video circuit that I had up here, um, but for the most part it runs okay. There's a couple problems with it, um, specifically with the AVR video on this particular example. Sometimes it doesn't reset, sometimes it does, and for some reason if you write data to it too fast or too much data at one go, it starts garbling data and it just the whole screen just takes a crap on you. And it's not the AVR chip itself, it's something to do with the board. And the reason why I know that is, is because I've tried about 10 different AVR chips on it, and each one of them performed exactly the same way. So it is one of those things where um, it, this isn't the most reliable board out there. Um, but it works well enough for testing purposes at least right now, and you know, it is compact, um, you know, it still needs a little bit of work and fitting and little, little bitty tiny things, but I'll probably do a second reversion or revision of that board, and then, um, you know, I'm going to basically replace this one in there and we'll call it good. But I also wanted to give you guys an example of this operating to, you know, give you kind of a proof of concept. So we're going to turn on my TV here, and hopefully you can see this. Um, it's going to dim out, and hopefully there it's going to be bright enough that you can see it. But we are going to plug this thing in, and we are going to do some testing. Now, when we plug it in, we automatically get this black screen, and this is what I'm talking about. You can see the cursor moving right there, but the circuit itself hasn't quite reset. Now if we hold this reset button down for a few minutes and we let it go, there we got a prompt, we got our text. So I'm just going to scoot this aside real quick and we're going to type on it and see what we can do. So we're able to pull up our help menu here. We go to basic. Basic comes up. my famous three-line basic program. There we go. So printed one to ten. So like I said, this is no trickery. This is simply the video hooked up. So we unplug that, video goes away. 
and we get our screen back. And then this is just power. So this isn't being run through the computer, this is being run through the TI itself. And this was the basis for this board. Um, again, not a lot is different. Um, I learned some lessons and I went this route. I decided to incorporate the CPLD to make some things easier because as you can tell, this board is about the same size, but this one has a lot more stuff going on. So the entire video circuitry here, I've revamped that. Um, you've got the um, this portion here, which is the uh, CPU, the um, S, or I'm sorry, the RAM, the SRAM, and the PIO, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, DART, which is here. You've got a PIO and a bunch of logic here. All that's being taken care of by the uh, CPLD. And uh, you know, like I said, this was only 32k of uh, ROM and 32k of RAM. Now this is capable of up to eight megabytes. So. We've got a lot more expandability with this, especially with this expansion header. If we decided to do like a riser card that laid uh, parallel to the board, we could add real-time clock, we could add um, all kinds of things to this, um, you know, more memory. Um, we could even, like I mentioned before, we've got our breakouts here for the video, so what we could do is something along the lines of a little daughter card that has a, you know, uh, like a composite uh, uh, LCD and a couple speakers on it and just mounted above it in like a small case. That way you would have something akin to the, um, what is the little Tandy uh, Rider computer with the 4 by uh, 40 display, you know what I'm talking about? Something along those lines but with an actual LCD capable of both 80 by 25 text as well as, you know, graphics and sprites. So, yeah, that's a uh, what I've been doing, and there we go. So we got our prompt, and of course, you know, we, we can't really do a hex dump because it's gonna mess up. I'll, I'll show you that real quick, at least right now. Um, it doesn't work out very well. It writes the data too fast most of the time. See, there you go, it crashed. And if you look real close, I'm not sure if you can see that. You can see some pixels up there. You can see the shape of the dumper program that I, I wrote, but the entire screen went black. We have to hold this down. If we just do a quick reset, it's probably not going to come up. Yep, see, we got a black screen again. But if we hold it down for, I don't know, maybe, you know, five to ten seconds and release it, it'll pop back up. And there we go. We got a prompt again. So, yeah. You live, you learn. Um, mistakes were made. I never figured out what they were, but I decided to uh, space everything out a bit and give myself some more room and try not to cram so much stuff on a small board. And hopefully that will fix the problem. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I really do. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in uh, for this series. This is one that I've actually been working on for most of 2020. Um, I'm not sure when I ordered this board, but I'll show you there the, uh, if you can see that, the date on it is 2020. And uh, I think it was sometime back in February, somewhere in there, whenever I ordered this, and then the pandemic hit, and I managed to get this up and going while we were quarantined here at the house. And then we went back to work, and it was craziness because I was only working about 25 hours a week, but I was expected to still be getting as much um, stuff done as I would have been had I been there for the normal 45 to 50 hours a week that I typically work. Um, and, you know, we were down personnel, so we had less people actually doing the job. Uh, we typically have three people doing my particular job at the law firm, and we were down to two. And lots of overtime normally, even with three people, and whenever you cut it down to two, makes it hard and then you factor in that I was only you know working you know half the time that I would normally be working and I am an hourly employee I'm not salaried um, even though I've got a degree in legal studies I'm paralegal not an attorney so pay was going down work was going up and it's just made for a miserable year I'm trying to get stuff done here at the house trying to keep caught up with everything so I haven't had a lot of time to make videos 
This video is actually going to be coming out in January, although it's being filmed as of, let me see here, December 10th of 2020. So we are still in the middle of this nightmare hell that is 2020. So I hope all of your uh, New Year's goes great, I, or by the time you watch this video, I hope it did. Um, I hope to see you hanging out in the comments down below or you know even checking out the website shoot me an email go to the website I've got a um, contact this page and you can send me an automated email from the website you know if you want to you know ask a question or just say hey like the content whatever it may be but I do want to thank you for stopping by I do want to thank you for you know taking a look at my you know project here because I don't do this just for me, I do this for everybody else. Sure, it's my hobby, but it is a lot of your hobbies, too, and the honest truth is the only reason why I do these videos is because people have asked me to continue to do them. Um, it's hard to find the time, and not everybody likes it, some people do, but it's always that one guy that comments, hey, fantastic video, you made me you know, pick this back up and try this again and do this or do that. I want to you know, say thanks so much for that. That means a lot to me and that's what keeps me making videos like this and ultimately series like this. I've been wanting to do a series on uh, CPLDs and FPGAs for a while now and so far this is video number five and it's been a while in the making. I think I started putting all this together sometime back in July is whenever I decided I was going to sit down and film a series on this. So it's been about six months, five months, somewhere in there, and um, I haven't had the most time to work on it, but the time that I have spent working on it, I've really enjoyed it. So again, I want to thank each and every single one of you, because if it weren't for you guys, I would not be shooting these videos. It's guys that continue to watch it that keep me doing these. So. Thank you very much. If you haven't already done so, subscribe. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Um, I know that sounds crazy and everybody asks you to do that, but it does help with metrics. Uh, the more you like you know, of my videos, it's going to find other people in the YouTube universe that also like things that are similar to you. And it's going to suggest my videos to them. And it doesn't mean a whole lot. I don't, I'm not even monetized but it helps get these videos out there and helps to you know spread these ideas and you know it's helped a lot of people i see people all the time that have drawn on things that i've done so you know keep it up keep it up just play around nobody's going to make money off this stuff but if you enjoy doing it and you can finance yourself enough to keep doing it by you know selling a couple of your own boards on your own website or to members of a forum or the various facebook groups by all means go for it because this is an area that's becoming more and more lost all right so tune in next week we are going to try to have a new video again next week again I'm filming this in December so I cannot guarantee what uh, January schedule is going to look like but I am planning on doing a new video this time around next week it's going to be something a little bit different so um, it's not going to be down the same road, but we are going to continue with the CPLD project, and um, we'll see where it takes us. All right. Thanks a lot. See you next week.